Saint Francis. Has anyone here heard of rare earth? It is a hypothesis that the earth has a limited time and that it will soon get shattered to pieces. Or at least that's what my professor in philosophy taught us. Ladies and gentlemen, while I do not exactly believe in that theory, I do know for a fact that rare earth can either be you or me. 18 years ago, my parents sat across a wooden table in a small clinic. The doctor was telling them something, but I couldn't understand what it was. So I looked at my mother, and I saw her eyes were watering. I looked at my father, and his fists were tightly clenched at his sides. As we walked home, I noticed my mother's eyes were still heavy with unshed tears, and her legs lay beneath her feet. She had to hold on to something to keep upright. She didn't ask the big why. She asked, how? How can this sort of thing happen to us? How is it possible? How can this thing happen to my three-year-old daughter whom I painstakingly carried in my home for nine months? She was shattered. And then there was my father. When we got home, he locked himself in the bathroom. And with trembling hands, he watched as hope slipped from his fingers like water. He punched the bathroom lights repeatedly. The pain was raw and undulating as he blamed himself. But it wasn't the bathroom tiles that shattered. No, it was him. It was him that was shattered. And then there was the three-year-old. I had no idea what was going on, and all I could do was ask. So I asked, Nanai, why can't I walk anymore? Tatai, what were you doing in the bathroom earlier? Why were you screaming? Nanai, Tatai, what are these dark purple patches on my skin? They couldn't answer me. For how could they, when even countless of doctors failed to name the thing that was afflicting me? Then they certain that result came, and that's when I finally met the name of my tormentor. ALL, or acute leukocytic leukemia. And we found out I only had a few months to live. It was a punch in the gut for my parents. Having leukemia meant blood transmission, which is, and it was, the standard operating procedure for each hospital. But I wouldn't have any of it because of our beliefs. My doctor, the one assigned to me, asked me, Anna, are you sure you don't want to do this? And I said, Oh, oh, no. But, Anna, you will not survive. You will get worse. And I told the doctor, But, Doc, if the Almighty God has the power to give me life, then shouldn't He also have the power to give it back to me when I lose it? Then, the news of a little girl who rejected the blood transfusion spread throughout the hospital. And it landed on a certain Dr. Adam Dacho. Now, Dr. Adam Dacho felt me. He approached us and told my parents that he felt that no patient should be deprived of any certain treatment just because of what he or she believes in. And so, to make my story short, he smuggled me to his hospital. And that's where we began our treatment. It was walking on five rope, gambling high stakes even, because back then, no one has heard of a bloodless treatment of leukemia. Everyone around us, the doctors, the patients, the parents, they told us, no, that's impossible. If the treatments with blood transfusions have high fatalities, how sure are you 
that your daughter will survive. But I don't think I need to tell you what happened. Because you only have to look at me right now to see how things work out. But this, this is a story that I have been keeping to myself for as long as I can remember. Not until my mentor asked me during one of her training sessions, Faith, if I ask you something, like, say, if I give you a seed of an apple gift that, would you still plant it knowing that the world will end tomorrow? And I said, yes, ma'am. I'd still plant it. Ladies and gentlemen, I answered yes. Because despite my initial diagnosis of my world ending, so to speak, my parents tried to give me the best taste of normal life they could ever give me. They went on as if nothing happened, as if nothing was wrong. So despite that, plant that apple tree still. Because we are rare earth. We may have limited lifespans and we they get constantly shattered to pieces, but rare earth also says that if you shatter to pieces, it will soon swirl back into place. And in life, there will always be someone or something that will help you do that, to be bound to fight together. And for me, that was Dr. Alan Nacho, the answer to our family's prayers. Who's yours? Come here.